Hello and welcome here in Phuket Pal's um, YouTube channel and uh, I'd like to share with you this screencast about the high set reading test and by the way this is teacher Marco and today um, you will just go over through uh, the high set reading test questions so I will be giving you a few questions, a few passages for us to work on and analyze and see <clears throat> uh, if um, we can answer them correctly. So just to give you a background, the high set reading test uh, is the first part of the uh, language parts part of high set and it assesses your ability to understand and analyze written passages so in the real test you will read a passage and then answer several questions about it reading and comprehension um, you will have 65 minutes to answer approximately 40 questions and all questions will be multiple choice and 40% of, uh, of of the reading test will cover informational content so questions such as like identifying an author's main point describing the structure of a passage analyzing an author's argument restating or applying ideas from the passage understanding words in the context of an informational passage what about the 60 percent uh, the 60 percent will cover literary content so questions such as understanding plot character and theme uh, describing the structure of the story and how it is used to develop the theme making inferences about characters and the author's attitude toward them understanding words and figurative language on the context of a fictional passage and compared to GED uh, high set will give you some poems and poetry okay so let's start with a few questions now uh, this first passage uh, you can actually try to pause your screen if you want to read it um, but just to give you a background about um, this uh, passage it's just a very short passage by the way how long are the passages usually around 400 to 700 words so this passage is talking about a violent storm that has threatened the first voyage of the ship uh, Nanshan this is the name of the ship and this excerpt from a work of fiction portrays several crew members including the first mate first mate uh, named Jukes and this is talks about how Jukes and um, all the crew in the ship uh, conquered uh, the time when uh, they confronted um, the storm so you can pause your screen and you can read this 25 26 line um, passage and uh, my advice is uh, it's okay to spend a lot of time in the reading passage rather than the question so give a lot of time in the reading part because when you go through the questions it's gonna be very fast it's that you will see the benefit of spending more time on the passage rather than on the question so what I always tell my students give yourself a lot of time reading the passage so instead of spending 
two minutes per question no uh, give more time to the passage and then later you'll notice that you'll be able to answer a question for as fast as 30 seconds so pause your screen and then after that we'll go through the questions so yep I hope that you were able to read the passage well now let's go to the first questions uh, in lines 1 to 2 the description of Jews as a ready man as any half dozen young maids may be caught by casting a net upon the waters means that what do we mean when we say Jukes is a ready man, as, a red, as ready a man as any half dozen young maids? What does it mean? So it means that he is generally capable as other first mates. So the key word here is as any, as other. So see the clue there? Uh, it's not better okay because when we say as any it means equal statements all right so it's not like the other one is better is a good catch because he has had many years of experience uh, if that then maybe we could have focus more on jukes and not trying to show equality between him and uh, his fellow first mates right does the work of six men it's similar as letter b so the best here is letter c best answer let's go to number two what was jokes doing while the crew rushed about the deck he was watching them we don't have an evidence about that so my tip is always follow the answer that is supported by an evidence is he watching his uh or is was jukes watching his crew he was working alongside them yes he actually called them right hey uh can you lend me a hand so if we go back here he said jump boys and bear a hand come on come here and give me a hand and help me that's what that means he was searching for the captain we don't have evidence for that he was urging men to jump overboard no it's actually you know they tried to conquer the storm uh they didn't run away or swim swam away from the boat no so he was working alongside them Three, Jukes most likely told himself that he had just expected this in order to... So, put yourself in the situation of Juke. So, for example, you're on a stage and you're doing a performance. Now, I can do this. I did this before. I know the song. So, it's like Jukes, Jukes saying, you know, just expected this you know i i know that there will be a storm so to make himself tough and stronger he is reassuring himself he's, he's told himself he didn't tell the crew so b is wrong uh the captain was not yet there we don't have an evidence hide his fear from the crew uh, we actually, there's no evidence that he's talking about fear or he's mentioning that he is afraid of, of something. Uh, he might be intimidated by the storm, but he is trying to be strong, so he's reassuring himself. Uh, number four, how did Jux feel when, the cap when Captain McWeir came on the deck? He is comforted. He said that. You know, it, it may be really hard to be a leader or command the ship because it's like you versus the storm. If you go back to the passage, uh, Captain McQueer would could expect no relief of that sort from anyone on earth. Meaning it's Captain Weir versus the winds and uh, the, 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 the storm. 
right? So, uh, Jokes was uncritically glad, see? So, uncritically glad means comforted. And number five, so number four is letter D, okay? Number five, in the third and fourth paragraphs, lines 13 to 26, the author had used this term as an opportunity to do which of the following. So, in 13 to 26, third and fourth paragraphs, Yeah, this one is talking about how Juke is handling the situation and how Captain McQueer is handling the situation and how are they differing. So basically, number five is showing the contrast, the captain's position of the responsibility of Juke's position. Portray the weakness in Juke's character? No. Uh, uh, the, the tone, the tone of the passage is not really uh, saying that Jux is weak. So Jux suggests that there is a conflict developing. No, no evidence. And Lauderdale described the various measures that must be taken while sailing a ship. No, there were no measures that were mentioned. So always try to check the options and select the one that is best. The one that is supported by evidence, the one that is supported by the passage. All right, check all the elements, the tone, the vocabulary, and uh, um, uh, the message that each line is saying in order to prove your answers. Now let's go to another passage. Now this passage, okay, this uh, passage is talking about a recent animal behavior uh, studies and it says that they have found that most species appear to spend great deal of time resting like you know uh, uh, most animals and insects most people think that they are hardworking you know uh, like ants um, who never stops gathering um, um, their food and their supply like bees but now this study is trying to prove that it's wrong you know most of uh, animals and insects spend most of their time doing nothing for example monkeys they spend three quarters of their waking hours just sitting while you know hummingbirds hummingbirds perch motionless about 80% of their day. Let's find out the reason why they do not do much activity for the rest of their days. So please pause your screen. By the way, I divided this into two slides. So pause the screen now. One, two, three, four, five. And the next slide one, two, three, four, five. There you go. I hope that I was, you were able to read it. And let's try to answer the questions. Number six, the passage suggests that the primary reason for animal inactivity. So I hope that you were able to find out why animals are not moving that much. So it's letter D, self-preservation, meaning they are conserving their calories, uh, they are staying away from hunters, or sometimes they're stalking or they're the one hunting, so they are trying to not move. That is why, that is the primary reason. Primary reason is for them to save some calories. Other reasons are, for them not to be hunted or for, th for them to hunt their food. What does indolence mean in line 6? Let's take a look at line 6. Indolence. A fair analysis of animal inactivity shows it is 
almost never born of aimless indolence, meaning animals are never born with uh, no reason of laziness, meaning there's a reason for them not moving. So number seven is laziness or lack of movement, but indolence here is more directed to laziness. So animals are not born lazy, okay? All right, that's what it means. Number eight, what innovation allowed biologists to discover the certain species of insects were less active than had previously been supposed? Meaning most people think that insects are always moving, but now biologists uh, tried to discover something. How? What did they use? They tried to the, check the ability to mark and keep track of individual members of the species. So they observed all these species of uh, insects. They tried to check their movement. So the answer is letter C. It's not through a formula. And uh, now the mathematical formula that we're talking about here it was later on okay it is not a recently developed one more thing there's no proof that uh, they use a mathematical formula that has been recently developed um, but they first use their observation and keeping track of the activities according to the passage what is one way biologists use models like those used by economists so why did they use like uh, uh, some models in order to check the activity of the insects and animals? Of course, they use it to measure and compare the calor uh, caloric expenditures of various activities. Meaning they try to find out like um, how much calorie will an animal burn if they try to hunt or if they stay outside um, and try running on a very hot and humid environment. So they actually use those models to check on those uh, information or data. Number 10, what is the most likely reason that biologists usually acknowledge their respect for animals' decision to lie low? So why do you think that the biologists reacted, wow, animals are so good that they're trying to conserve their, uh, their you know, their uh, uh, calories or animals are geniuses. They know what they're doing. Why did biologists uh, acknowledge that? What is the reason behind that? So the reason behind that is their studies show that rest periods are necessary for safety and conservation of animals' energy. Basically, they learn that these are helpful for animals. So now they have high respect, unlike before, right? So uh, their field work made them experience first and the dangers animals cope with in the wild. Possibly, but this statement is too general. Uh, we say here, most likely, the best answer. They think animals work in short, efficient births and then take long rest, provide a sensible model for humans. No, not really, not mentioned. Uh, it is implicated, but not really the reason why biologists acknowledge the respect. They observe that species, it's the author who's saying this, but not the biologist, by the way, okay? They observe that species that rest more seem to have lower stress levels. This one is clearly unmentioned. Which of the following means associated the word singular with the word singular seems most included in line 28? Singular means unique. Let's try to check uh, line 28. In 5, 6, 7, 28. By singular, desire to, gather, desire to gather resources far beyond what is required for survival. Singular desire. Unique desire. Right, that's what we mean by singular there. 
And number 12, which of the following explanations does the passage suggest for humans tendency to spend uh, more time, spend relatively more time working? Why are humans working so hard when animals have more resting periods? Why is that? It's because humans work to address not this their current needs but their future needs and their wants. That is on the last paragraph. You see here, they spend more time working to do other that working than do other creatures. Why uh, we can override our impulses to slow down, uh, and we want we have desire to gather resources far beyond what is required for our survival. Okay, squirrels collect what they make it through one winter. But humans, they think about the next season and the next season and the next season. We have come over the age of hunter-gatherers, right? That's the reason why humans have more tendency to work longer time. 13. Which of the passages states the primary purpose? What is the primary purpose? Why is the author writing this passage? So again, if you do not understand a question, try to paraphrase it using your own words, okay? To demonstrate the unreasonableness of human attitudes towards work and rest. Now, it's not focused on human. The passage is not focused on human. Uh, it was mentioned, but it's not, the highlight is not a human. To analyze the specific work and rest behaviors of humans and insects, there's no compare and contrast on the passage. Uh, to compare activity levels in various species with those of humans, again, there's no compare and contrast. So B and C are almost the same. And D, to, com to explain how, how and why views of animal inactivity have recently been revised. Meaning, uh, the way how we see ants and other insects and other animals before um, is totally different now. We now know that there is inactivity among them. And uh, our perceptions or our general knowledge before about insects and animals have now totally been revised upon reading this passage. So that is the purpose of our passage. So if you notice the techniques that I use is so that I always check and weigh all the options. I spend more time on reading the passage. I try to find which option has um, has an evidence and I try to check the point of view of the question I don't try to assume I see I understand and read the questions properly okay so again I want to thank you for your time and I hope that I was able to help you understand more about the HiSIT reading test. If you want to know more about us, check out our Facebook page, that's facebook.com slash Pals or our website, that's crookedpals.org. Thank you for your time and see you on our next video. Okay.